How to Stop Aerosol Transmission of the COVID-19 Coronavirus. Recently, a group of over 200 scientists wrote an open letter to the World Health Organization and other organizations, urging them to recognize and acknowledge aerosol transmission of the virus, including many experts in many different fields related to aerosol transmission. So far, the World Health Organization has somewhat acknowledged that this does in fact occur. Airborne or aerosol transmission is transmission of the disease by tiny particles so small you cannot see them. You require a microscope to see them. These particles will float in the air without falling to the ground for hours, days, perhaps indefinitely. They are so small that they pass through holes and cracks in masks. Not just cloth masks, but in fact they will do the same or a similar thing will happen for the foam rubber or plastic, the N95 masks. They can, for example, pass very easily through cracks between the surface of the mask and your skin. We can use ultraviolet lights to destroy the aerosol particles and viruses in the air as well as on surfaces just by shining the ultraviolet light on the surface and it travels through the air and it will destroy the viruses in the air. Ultraviolet lights have been used that way already. They're sometimes used in ventilation systems out of sight where the air that's circulating through the ventilation system is bathed in ultraviolet light to kill the bacteria, the viruses, etc. actually in the air. So this behind me is an ultraviolet light. I'll bring it up close. This is about $80. Put it up here, you can see it. It has solid state LED type components to produce the ultraviolet light. It has a base. It has a remote control. The reason for that, or one of the reasons for the remote control, is the ultraviolet light unfortunately is dangerous to you. So it can damage your skin, your eyes, cause cancer. So typically the way you want these to function is you put them in a room, leave the room, turn on the light remotely, shut the door, which is what I've done with uh, some rooms, like a bathroom in my apartment, an office I have, other places. And you turn it on for about 30 minutes, and it will destroy all sorts of things, bacteria, viruses, fungus, anything exposed to the light for a prolonged period of time. The first time you use it, you'll get a, or at least I got, a burnt smell. So you can actually smell the things that were incinerated, even though you can't see them. Once you've sterilized a, a room, for example, typically subsequent usage is you don't smell anything. And at least in my experience, which is limited to a couple of rooms, they smell really good, antiseptic, very clean from then on. And I zap them every, uh, periodically. Uh, this works on about a 100 square foot room, so like 10 feet by 10 feet office or bathroom. I'll talk about some other things it could be used on. I'm going to briefly demonstrate it operating, uh, and then I'll make a few more comments and end the video. So I'm going to put it over here behind me where you can see it. And I'm going to put on this eyewear. So these are special goggles that you put on to protect against ultraviolet light. So I put those on to protect myself from the ultraviolet light. And I'm also going to put on some gloves, although I'm still going to expose some of my face to the ultraviolet light. I'm only going to have it on for a very short period of time. But ideally, you don't want to be exposed to this ultraviolet light at all. And here we go. So I'm going to turn it on with the remote control. All right. And it actually saturates the camera here. It doesn't look like this to me. Uh, it doesn't look quite as bright. You can see the ultraviolet light is on. Now I'm going to turn it off. As I mentioned, I don't want it on for very long. I just wanted to illustrate the basic operation of these lights, which are sold for disinfecting rooms and equipment and so forth. Now, as I mentioned, this is what's called UVC, UVC as in cat, light. And the C band of ultraviolet light is not in our atmosphere. It's not in sunlight. There's UVA and B, which is in sunlight. C is actually screened out by the atmosphere. It's very powerful, and it's used for disinfecting, again, rooms and equipment. And it typically hasn't been used very heavily so far for the kind of uses we might use it for with the coronavirus. 
As I mentioned, the problem with this is it's actually harmful to people and the light is not good to get your skin exposed to, your eyes, it may cause cancer. It could also pose unknown health, threat, health risks for people with pre-existing health conditions who are the high-risk people for the coronavirus. Ideally, you would like them never to be exposed to the ultraviolet light at all. However, when they're gone, we would like the light to turn on and sterilize the environment. So there are many environments that we take for granted where the aerosol particles can collect and persist for hours, days, maybe indefinitely. They include, for example, the vestibules in an apartment complex, a assisted living community, perhaps a nursing home, uh, where you dispose of trash. They would include laundry rooms where everybody goes, lobbies, hallways. They also include things like Safeway or Target stores that everyone in Santa Clara County is being forced to go shop in because all the little stores have been closed you have a huge number of people being herded into a few large buildings with little or no windows where the aerosol particles can float around indefinitely fortunately we don't seem to be seeing the number of cases or deaths in santa clara county you might expect especially given how close our ties are to california to excuse me to china you might wonder about that. The point is that we can set these up. We could combine them with uh, motion sensor switches, such as you may be encountering in offices, which work in the opposite way. They turn on the lights when people are around, which we don't want with ultraviolet light. Rather, we want the light to be turned off when there's motion, when there's people around. We want the lights to turn on when people leave a laundry room, when they leave a business, when they leave a hallway. Then the lights should turn on sterilize the hallway, the shared space, the office, whatever they may have been in. Sterilize it completely, which with this light takes about 30 minutes for a 100 square foot room. And then it's okay for another person to use it and then repeat the process. Probably in addition to the motion sensors, the light, the ultraviolet light would be combined with lights. So Red would indicate the sterilization is in process. Green would indicate the sterilization is completed and the room or other space is safe to, for a new person to enter. One might even use a countdown, a red LED countdown. So we start at 30 minutes, counts down to zero when the sterilization is completed. That way people can look at it and say, oh, I need to come back in 10 minutes when the room is sterilized. Green would indicate the room is sterile. These could be put in nursing homes, assisted living communities, in the homes or residences or apartments of people who are at high risk, meaning the elderly, people with serious health conditions, which are at high risk for serious consequences from the coronavirus or indeed many other viruses. Influenza, for example, works much the same way, according to the prevailing theory. Probably many other viruses, many other bacteria, if you are very old, very frail, have a pre-existing health condition, your risks are much higher than a 22-year-old in perfect health, which who rarely die from these things, these diseases. This is a proven technology for the most part. I mean, we, these things are in widespread use already. The sensors, much of the other technology, although it's not used for controlling ultraviolet lights, usually is a proven technology or very close to proven. It's not like vaccines or where we've, there's never been a successful vaccine for a coronavirus before. There've been attempts which killed more people than not being vaccinated. Some of the vaccines proposed for the coronavirus, the RNA technology is completely new, unproven. There are many reasons to wonder about its safety. It's never been tested even on a small number of people, let alone trying to vaccinate the entire human race as has been proposed by various people. In contrast, these can be installed in nursing homes, assisted living communities and other places to protect the vulnerable and indeed everyone, but especially those people who are at high risk very quickly, very easily. Undoubtedly for, to do it worldwide or to do it in the US would cost billions of dollars. However, this is much less than the trillions that have already been spent on supposed stimulus to deal with the coronavirus, much of which for some strange reason went to large banks and Wall Street firms who don't really seem to be at particularly high risk from the coronavirus. So this concludes the demonstration. I'll bring it up here one more time just to reinforce the point. This is an ultraviolet light. 
It's an LED technology. I got it for about $80. I've used it a few times to sterilize some rooms in my apartment and office. I do not claim to be an expert on this. And if you seriously want to do this for some reason, then you should seek out qualified medical expertise, people who are expertise in using ultraviolet light, medical doctors, the appropriate people to tell you whether this is the right thing for you, what to do exactly. Um, I'm not qualified to do that. But I just want to make people aware that there is probably a way to destroy the aerosol particles and to sterilize many currently difficult or impossible to sterilize areas and in a way that maintains the sterilization through automated turn on of the lights. That concludes this demonstration. Professional disclaimer for website and other products. The site, our YouTube channel, our other social media and web accounts, sites, and our software cannot and do not contain medical, legal, fitness, health, financial, or other advice. The medical, legal, fitness, health, financial, or other content is provided for general informational and educational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional advice. Accordingly, before taking any actions based upon such information, we encourage you to consult the appropriate professionals. We do not provide any kind of medical, legal, fitness, health, financial, or other professional advice. The use or reliance of any information contained on this site, our YouTube channel, our other social media or web accounts, sites, or our software, including but not limited to Ad Evaluator, is solely at your own risk. With respect to the ultraviolet lights discussed in this video, if you wish to use these for your health, for your business, for serious reasons, you need to consult appropriate professionals, including medical doctors and experts in ultraviolet lighting, sterilization, and related fields. Those are the only people that are legally qualified to certify to recommend these kind of pieces of equipment and methods for you. As discussed in this video, ultraviolet light is dangerous and can damage your skin, eyes, is believed to cause cancer in some cases, and may have other serious health consequences. Therefore, if you're interested in using ultraviolet lighting for personal health and safety, you should seek appropriate professional advice. This concludes this video presentation. If you like this video, please click like. Please click subscribe and the notification bell if you would like to receive more content from us. You can avoid internet censorship by subscribing directly to our RSS news feed. Please consider sharing the link by email or on your website or blog in addition to liking, upvoting, or sharing on increasingly censored, advertising beholden, and big company social media. We have encountered such censorship. Mathematical software is developing software to automate data analysis, reducing the risks of costly errors and improving results. You can support our work financially by subscribing on our Patreon page. Scan the QR code in the lower right corner to get the Patreon link. Our Patreon link is also in the show notes below.